Swift 5.6 has been released with many new features. One of the most important and heading to the future is the introduction of a new keyword called any to make explicit the usage of an existential type. But what is an existential type and why this new keyword was implemented in the first place? We are going to learn the reason right now. In Swift, we have protocols that are equivalent to interfaces in other languages. You can use a protocol in two ways. One is has a generic constraint for a type parameter, but other simpler approach is just using the protocol has a type. In this context, the protocol is actually an existential type. An existential type is simple an abstract type that can hold any value of any conforming type dynamically at any point in time. In short words, because this definition could be even more complex, let's say that every time you use a protocol has a type that is an existential type. The existential type concept is important because the Swift documentation talks a lot about it, especially the proposal of any keyword. And speaking of that, what is the point of any keyword? Let's focus on the play sound functions again. If you had to choose one approach to implement this function, what would you choose? I'm pretty sure that most of you will use the second approach with the existential type. Sounds logical, right? I mean, creating a generic function just for a simple task like this sounds overkilling. And also, some books like Linkode recommend to use interfaces to model your objects to generate dependency injection. It turns out that using existential types in Swift have a serious impact in your performance. Why is this happening? Let's focus on the generic function. When you declare a generic function like this, at compilation time, Swift will resolve all the gaps of what kind of animal can be invoked here and what will be the different versions of make sound method depending of the concrete types conforming animal. In other words, once the compilation is done, Swift is already prepared with some methods in line to execute depending of the animal type. This technique is also known as static dispatch. In the other hand, let's take a look at the existential type version. In this case, Swift cannot resolve the concrete type. Actually, Swift will have to figure that out at runtime in the middle of the execution of your app, which means that every time you invoke this function, Swift will have to do a search in something called virtual table or bTable to figure out what is the right make sound method to call this time. That also means that we have to use dynamic memory to allocate the concrete type that will hold animal parameter. This process is known as dynamic dispatch. And for this example, could be redundant, but think about this in a big application. The performance will decrease drastically following this approach. Since that existential type approach is super easy to implement and most people don't even think about the consequences of the performance impact, the Swift community decided to incorporate a new keyword called any that must be added before protocol type declaration. This keyword is not changing anything about the performance, but works like an explicit flag that what we are using here is an existential type, and with it, all the implications are already explained. Also, let me clarify that any is not the same like some keyword. Some is required to mask a concrete type like Swift VI views where the real concrete type for a view is too complex. This is done by only exposing the conforming protocol type. You can read more about some keyword and opac types in a link in the description below and in the card appearing in the screen. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't use existential types at all. There is no silver bullet in software development. However, Swift community recommends to minimize the usage of existential types as much as possible and use generic constraints instead. Lastly, I want to point out that any keyword is optional for Swift 5.6 and incoming versions will be marked as a warning if you don't use it for existential types and marked as an error from Swift 6.0 and above. Start using it as soon as possible and be aware that this could break your legacy code in a coming version of Swift. If you want to learn more about generics and protocols, I left some links for you in the description below too. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.